And I love this accelerating scientific breakthrough with an AI co-scientist. You know, I love the fact that we saw uh, we saw uh, the Nobel Prize going to Demis and John Jumper for the creation of an AI model able to predict the folding of a protein. My expectation, Richard, and, and you're both a deep scientist and a deep programmer, is that almost all breakthroughs are going to come from AI in the not too distant future. And we'll, we'll attach it to a human so a human can get the Nobel Prize, but it's going to be fundamentally in, the materi in materials, in mathematics, in science, in medicine. Am I wrong there? 100%. Yeah, I'm writing, writing a book on this uh, sort of in my nights and weekends um, on AI for science, and it's called The Eureka Machine, so sort of the working title. And I'm a big believer. Interesting enough, also, when you ask a lot of folks all over the world, um, in areas where they're scared of AI, most folks uh, are scared that it takes their jobs. But in terms of science and medicine, no one wants more jobs. They just want more breakthroughs and cool <laughs> discoveries. So everyone is aligned. Everyone worldwide is aligned. Let's just have AI do a lot of science. So there's a lot of positive momentum behind it, and I think we'll we'll see more and more discoveries. Uh, first, with the help of AI, and eventually. You might be mostly guided, right? You need to kind of tell the AI, this is what we care about the most. And then it can go off and do more and more in an automated fashion. This is the area that I'm most interested in, because I think there's just so many, if you provide it with data sets and go formulate 5,000 hypotheses and start testing them, it can do virtual testing of all sorts of things. And I'm incredibly excited as to what's going to come from this. I love this last bullet here. It says replicated 10 years of antibiotic resistance studies in just 48 hours. Dario was at Davos, Dario, the CEO of Anthropic, and he said something which I clipped, which I love. He said, listen, we're going to see a century worth of biomedical research in the next five to 10 years. And one can imagine that during that century of biomedical research that we would potentially double the human lifespan. And so it's not unlikely it could double the human lifespan in the next within the next decade. So I'm always listening for those signals because you know that's like I'm in it for in it to win it on the on the doubling the human lifespan, um, and then we'll we negotiate. <laughs> we'll negotiate where we go from there. Uh, we saw uh, Larry Ellison uh, when he was on stage on Stargate uh, announcing the idea that we're going to have you know personalized mRNA vaccines against your cancer should you have it. And so for me, this is like one of the most extraordinary areas of reinventing medicine, curing cancer, uh, curing uh, viral infections, curing death, perhaps, who knows? Um, I, yeah, I think a lot of people who now say, oh, like Brian Johnson and longevity folks are just like, that's a bad idea. I think one, most of those people are healthy and aren't currently battling anything. Uh, and two, <laughs> They're just like people before the baby pill came out, right? And they're like, oh, that's not natural. I'm like, yeah, you know, like there's a lot of bad stuff that's natural, like murder and no laws are natural. Like there's just animal kingdom, right? Stuff. And so there's like all kinds of bad natural things. And humanity has been pretty good at improving uh, from that natural state. And uh, I think it lacks a certain creativity when people think we can't ever solve aging and health spans and things like that. So, you know, we in 2018 started uh, the largest project for a large language model for proteins. And we wow. actually uh, published that paper when I was still at Salesforce. Um, and we've had uh, incredible success. In fact, we, we believed in so much. We worked with wet labs and actually synthesized those proteins. And they were 40 percent different to naturally occurring proteins. And just to put that into perspective, Francis Arnold, about four years ago, won a Nobel Prize for what she called directed evolution, which was random permutations with a lot of experimental like uh, science in the, in, the, in the loop. And then saying, oh, this random permutation improved this particular property, so let's keep this and then keep iterating. By the end of her very long process, those proteins were 3% different to naturally occurring proteins. And ours were 40%. And what wow. taught us that we actually captured the syntax, the grammar of these proteins was that they folded properly and they had the properties we predicted them to have and we wanted mm -hmm. them to have. And so there's a lot more work that comes from this. A bunch of startups have already started. And yeah. once you understand the language of proteins, all the medicine will, will follow. This goes back to, Salim, your point about AI interfacing with the physical universe, right? So um, another friend, uh, Alex Zabarankov, the CEO of In Silico Medicine, uh, one of the things that he's done, and he was he was very early in generative AI and uh, 
uh, and drug discovery. But he's built a massive robotic laboratory where he can basically have the AI come up with experiments uh, and run those experiments, you know, 100 times faster than humans, get the data, iterate the experiment, run the experiment. And so you literally create a theoretical world and a physical world. Uh, I, I find that extraordinary. Yeah, I think we're going to see hundreds of examples like this where people now, if the only limit is our imagination and how fast we can apply some of these because the speed of the technology is now at a level where we can pretty much go down any avenue we want. Me personally, I'm looking for how do you reconcile quantum mechanics with, with relativity as a, as a physics major? That's my thing. And I think AI will be able to figure it out. 